Okay, so if you got a Bible today, I want to take you back, uh, first of all, to Psalms 24. And uh, again, I have been really, really, really excited about what I think the Lord is doing, what I believe the Lord is doing in this season. And, and it begins with us understanding what I call the moment, the hour, where we really are. Uh, I happened to catch a dear prophetic fed, uh, Elder Vine, did you get a chance to listen to that prophecy, that gentleman I told you? Uh, and uh, the gentleman uh, was, was just highlighting some things that was going on in the body of Christ and, and what we're trying to get through. We are really trying to get through uh, a lot of what I call demonic stuff that has been downloaded from the kingdom of darkness to keep you and I separated from one another, to, to, to consistently create division and separation. And, and it, it has really wreaked havoc on the universal body of Christ. And even though we're starting to come back together, we're not together yet. We're not together yet. And, and I believe that the, the, one of the things, if you look at those prophetic projections, I believe that we're on the threshold of the gathering. But it's gonna take some unique things to happen in this gathering that's going to really cement our connection. I call it chasing skirts. All right. See, I believe the woman with the issue of blood got a revelation that was beyond her condition. I mean, she had spent 12 years of losing life and something about what she heard about Jesus coming through changed the whole outlook of the rest of her life. So I, I want you to hear this word like this word could change the rest of my life earthly existence. It really could. It really could. I'm discovering this, that secret things are revealed, are, are uncovered in certain dispensations. You know, in your life, my life, it's like, God, you could have told me this a couple of years ago, and we would have been cool. And God said, I couldn't tell you then because you were not mature enough to walk with me in that spot. All right? You know, and I, and I appreciate the fact that in, in seasons of my life, God said, I'm going to show you this, show you this, show you this. And they were waiting. And I, and I would just rather say, well, God, just let me walk through it. You don't have to tell me because then something in me started looking for who was going to do it to me. Yes, <laughs> All right. But Psalms 25, 14 says, the secret of the Lord is with them that do what? Fear him. And he will show them his covenant. All right. So, so the unveiling of secrets is God's way of saying, I want you to understand that I only share these kind of mysteries with people that are in covenant with me. And when I say covenant, individuals that understand that, that when God entrusts us with information, that, that there's a responsibility that comes along with that information. All right. I have not always been the best steward of what God has revealed. All right, uh, something in me just said, oh, that's good, that's good news, that's good news. And God said, well, I didn't share it with you for it to be good news. I want to know if you prayed, if you interceded, if you watched, if you walked circumspectly. So I have matured in these secret things that God has given me, right? All right, uh, I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that I am a steward, all right? And stewards have to be found faithful. So... I wouldn't ask anybody else around you, but ask yourself, have I been faithful over what God has entrusted to me? Yes, sir. Yeah? All right. Amos 3 says, and surely the Lord will do nothing, but he, but he revealeth his secrets unto his what? Surely, surely he'll do nothing. Does that mean he's going to tell us everything? No. He's going to give us enough so that we can navigate and operate. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God has given me, us, enough in this season to navigate and operate and to see what is about to come. So I invite you back now to Genesis chapter 2 because we have been talking about uh, generations, seasons, days, and the unveiling of hidden things. So, sir, if you got a Bible, I want you to start at Genesis 2 and 4 and read verse 5, and then we'll, we'll make it do what it's going to do. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. That's right. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Okay, so read it again. These are the what? These are the generations of the heavens uh -huh. and of the earth when they were created. That's right. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. All right, so in the book of Genesis, we will see a consistent pattern of what God created and then what he made. So the things that God created were in a rim called the invisible rim. He then reached into the invisible rim and then pulled it out, then he made it. 
or everything that we see made was create was made was was formed out of a rim that we couldn't see. All right. So everything that is yet to come is still in a rim called the invisible rim, the created rim. Now, just because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So God has determined a plan, a time, and a season that he is going to unveil what we can't see. All right. So I want you to look at your neighbor, and, and uh, you just dropped the mask for a moment and said, I'm not looking at the best of you yet. There's still some things in there that God created, and we're waiting for him to make them. All right. Now, when God uses the word make, understand there's a process involved. Everything that is made is made in the lower parts. And you don't see, that's the part we don't want to hear. When God gets ready to make some stuff, he'll drop us down into a low place. Did you hear me, son? When God gets ready to make something that we cannot see, he will drop us down into a low place so that we understand the hand that's manifesting it is God and not us. So God will take us through seasons that he will empty out you and I, of you and I, to get us in a place that we are dependent upon him to do it. Tell your neighbor it's a low place. Now, now if you got dreams of going real big, you also need to think about how low you need to get. How much lower can I get? Well, I'm telling you what, this season I said it can't get any worse than this. Only to find a Lord have mercy. That there's there's levels of lows. Right? Sin, I believe something happened in the woman. And again now, I wish I could tell you that low was a couple of days. Low for the woman with the issue was 12 years. And by the time she met the encounter with her day, I believe she was already on the ground. She was already low. She had nothing else to lose. She's lost her money, her reputation. She had lost everything. But then she heard something. And what she heard said, this is a making day for me. And the Bible said she pressed her way in behind everybody else that was around Jesus. And when she touched the skirt, Tell your neighbor, you got to chase the skirt, baby. When she touched the skirt, something left Jesus, and the Bible said she knew something was done in her. I'm trying to tell you, something's about to be done in you. Can you feel me yet? All right. So, so, so God, what are you saying? There were generations in this creation. And when you look at the word generations there, it means descendants, proceedings, genealogies, the account of man and his descendants. So every person that is destined to be manifested in the earth rim has already been created. Then God determines, well, what's the day I'm going to make them? So your birth date is really the day that God made you. It was not the beginning of you. It's the day that you showed up, that we could see you. You got me? So in the beginning, God created generations, and then somewhere in time, he said, now I'm going to make what I've already created. I'm going to manifest what I already created. You got me? So you and I are here because God had predetermined that this was the season or the day that we should be visible. So what are you doing? What are we doing? And what are people really looking at? I'm going somewhere. So, so if you follow for, it says there are generations of the heavens, that's right, and the earth, when they were created. Notice that heavens is always plural and earth is always single. Just, just, just want y'all to just chew on that for a moment. So there were generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. And then God said, but there's going to be a day that I'm going to make it. Right. All right. So generations are connected cre to creation and day is connected to manifestation. So when you and I arrive, it was the beginning of a day. You got me? Now. The next verse says, and, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. All right, so before it got to the day, where was it? Before it got to the day, it was hanging out in creation. All right, 
So there were, come on, it's right there. In every plant of the field before it was in the earth. So when we get to the earth, we're talking about a day. But before we get to the earth, we're talking about it was out there in creation. So there were plants out there in creation waiting on a day to be manifested. I need y'all to stay with me because if y'all lose this point, you're not going to make it. Okay? And then what else? And every herb of the field before it grew. All right. So there were plants and herbs that were assigned to a certain day. Now, it's not that they didn't exist. We just didn't see them because it was not the day. Kind of? Well, let, 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 me, let me show you here. In Genesis chapter 3. You ready? And so God is now having a conversation with man, woman, and the serpent, right? After the fall. And the Lord says, verse 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, That's right. Thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Uh -huh. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Keep reading. And, and I put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, That's and right. thou shall bruise his heel. That's right. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Greatly multiply. Keep in going. sorrow shall thou bring forth children, mm -hmm. and thou desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's right. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded mm -hmm. thee, saying, That's Thou right. shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Mm -hmm. And sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That's right. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Okay, so where were thorns and thistles before the fall? They were hidden out here in creation. And it was Adam's transgression that activated what we couldn't see. All right? So, so listen, I'm trying to just say to you, to me, that there are decisions and choices that we make activate stuff in the invisible realm. And, and be, because we're not walking close enough to God's image of our day, we activate some stuff that should have never been activated. Y'all not with me. The Lord says to Cain, listen, Cain, if you do good, you're going to be accepted. If you don't, there's, there's something lying at the door. You really don't want to open up this door. Listen, I can tell you from my own experience, there have been doors that I've played with. Should have never opened. But because I was grown, I touched the doorknob. <laughs> right? Now, those doors represent a threat to what I was purposed to manifest it in the day. So all of my journey now has been trying to balance the doorknob that I just had to put my hand on and the day that God's trying to manifest. And there's only one person that's going to be able to deliver me from that evil. Y'all not listening. So why didn't God just smack your hand? Well, come on. Because we make choices along the way. God said, I'm going to work your choices in with the day. You got me? So thorns and thistles are now manifested because of a choice that Adam made. Well, where were they before this time? They were hidden in creation. There are things about you and I that are still hidden in creation that are waiting for something to activate it. Now, what is, what is the real plan of God? Why does God have to use my bad stuff to activate me? Huh? Why does God have to send me down the hole to make me want to get sanctified? Why does God let all this bad stuff happen to me? Then they say, now I'm going to pray, now I'm going to worship. Why can't I just do the right thing? Ask your neighbor, why can't you just, just, just why can't you just do the right thing? Come on, why can't we just do the right thing? Well, I got an answer to why. Because something in you and I would rather operate dependent from God than trust God. 
something in us now as a result of the fall that says, I would rather experience it than discern it. I would rather go through the motions than wait for God to tell me. Because I don't know why God is taking so long to tell me stuff. <laughs> the reason why God time delays information is because we're not mature enough to know what to do with it. I know you didn't like that. Okay, I'm back in Genesis chapter 2. It's going to be probably one of the best messages of the new year. You said we only had. Well, this is going to be right at the top. So why is there a delay on what's manifested? The so every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every earth of the field before it grew, for what? For the Lord God had not caused it to rain All right. on the earth. So, so here's one. It takes a certain type of precipitation to activate what's in the creation. All right? We have this principle from Isaiah 55. It says rain comes down, snow comes down, waters the earth, and causes the earth to bring forth in bud. So there are things that are hidden in the earth, in you and I, that takes a certain type of precipitation, word, to hit it right, to activate something. So some of us have just, I mean, we just have not been under the right word. Right? I mean, it's not that we ain't heard the Bible, we just ain't heard the truth. <laughs> Uh, there's a difference than hearing some story than somebody confronts you with the truth. Because the truth makes you mad, then you get free. Right? And then, five says what? And, and there was not a man to till the ground. It takes a mature individual that knows how to work dirt. It takes a certain type of priest that can look behind your top surface, your top soil, and see something still hidden on the inside of it. So thank the Lord that God has positioned us around some individuals that can, they can look beyond all of our foolishness. Yeah. Woo, thank the Lord. Look at him. Say, you said, oh, I need to give you a couple of dollars for that. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> what, are, what, what are you talking about? Because you know, by ourselves, we a mess. So the Lord has brought us into the company of individuals that know how to discern the dirt. Right? <laughs> Ooh, that's good news. All right. So when we talk about now the day, so there's a certain day that, that maybe rain will hit or a certain day that God will unveil an individual. All right? And when those individuals come upon the scene and they activate this thing on the inside of us, it positions us to help protect now experience, but to discern the hand of God that's trying to manifest a certain thing in our day. Notice I said discern, not experience. All right. When I talk about discernment, I'm talking about bringing us into a level of rela relationship. Discernment is the product of relationship. Hallelujah. Knowledge is the product of experience. All right. So you don't follow people for experience. You try to get some discernment and you've got to have relationship. So we follow after God for the relationship. And then he gives us discernment, which says you don't have to go through it. You just need to listen to what I say. Yeah. You got me? Yeah. All right. So when we talk about these seasons, I call them seasons or dispensations of manifestation. Last time we were together, we dropped down in Ezekiel chapter 47. Okay, if you turn there, please, uh, Ezekiel 47, because the man of God was, was challenged by God to go and measure these waters, this anointing, this presence, these rivers, this water that was flowing out of the presence of God. And the Bible said he went distinctly four times and he came away with measurements and they measured a thousand. Well, according to 2 Peter chapter 3, thousands is prophetic language for a day. So each one of these measurements, are y'all with me? Y'all need me to read all these scriptures? All right. So each, so each one of these thousands represents a day. Okay? So the first day, uh, let's start at verse 3. And the man that had... And the man had... In his hand, that's had a, right. Had the line in his hand, that's right. Forth eastward, mm -hmm. and he measured a thousand cubic, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. All right. So day one was about ankles, and we we said last week. I, I don't want to stay here long. Ankles have to do with our walk. Correct. 
So, so on day one, God is saying, I'm trying to judge how you walk. Yes. All right. Then four. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. Say with me, you got to go through it. Got to go through it. You can't go around it. Can't go, you can't graduate without the class. All right, so he brought me through the waters, and this time in verse 4, the waters were where? To the knees. Knees have to do with? Submission. Submission. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the what? The loins. And the loins have to do with? And then afterward, he measured a what? A thousand, and it was a river All right. that I could not pass over. That's right. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. Six. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? And he, and he did what? And thou, then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. That's right. Now when I had returned, behold, at the, brink, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Wow. Hold on. Hold. So where were the trees at before this? They were in the cre cre created rim. Did they show up on day one? Day two? Day three? Now, now, wait a minute now. So we got four days? Now, four days is odd in the scriptures because every time we go through and start looking at days and symbolism of the days, it's always three. Where did the fourth day come from? Are y'all following me? I mean, you ever heard of people talking about day, the day one, day two, day three? Death, burial, resurrection. Down in hell for three days, right? So where do we get this 4,000? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Just, just, I just want you to say, hmm, that's a question right there. So trees didn't show up day one. They were already there, but they didn't show up. Were they day, where were they day two? Where were they day three? So do you, you think it was then illegal for some of us to sit around and say, but I'm going to be a tree day one. <laughs> I mean, do, do you think just on day two you ought to show up? I'm a, I'm a full-grown tree, really. So remember now, you've got to go through the day. You've got to go through the process. So it, 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 it makes me kind of wonder, there's a whole lot of folk walking around here hollering mature, and they're still in day one. You may look like a tree, may think you're a tree, but you're really not grounded like a tree. Therefore, what are you producing? Now listen, this is not badger the saints. It's just for us to help understand that God has a process. All right, so there's a reason why God hid these things. It had to do with the flow of the river. By the time we hit four day, you should be out of control. <laughs> I said it right. You just need to catch it. By the time you hit the overflow, you should be led by the Spirit, no longer led by you. <laughs> All right, so then, what day are you really in? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, yes. All right. So, so what if this 4,000 is real similar to what we just read in Genesis chapter 2, that certain things are just not going to be manifested, plants, herbs, now we got a tree, till either a certain moisture, rain comes, Hallelujah. or a certain individual shows up. What if the fourth day speaks to a day that is yet promised? I'm going somewhere with this. I'm just trying to intrigue you. Y'all y'all not working with me real good, so I'll just keep going on. All right, so let, let's, let's talk about the trees. It's obvious that the trees were growing through the flow. All right, so imagine that we are maturing and getting better at being grounded as we go through the flow. Now, the enemy would say, oh, you're just going through again. I mean, you should have been beyond this. And, and, and that's where the enemy will keep you in that mindset. But, but, God, but God is saying, but don't you know that something is also getting rooted and grounded and established with you? You're just not going through it again like you did two years ago. You got a stronger root system. You got a strong, anybody, you got a stronger foundation, right? You see, well, you, you may be, at, this smells just like it did two years ago, yeah, but you are better. 
You are different. We're mature now. So the trees were being nourished by the flow. You want to grow up? Get in the flow. When not, when just a couple of trees, it was a whole lot of trees. Right? And then the Bible said something else happened. Are you reading still there? All right. And he said to me, son of man, mm -hmm. has thou seen this? That's that he right. brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. That's right. And now when I had returned, behold, a bank at the bank of the river were yes, very sir. many trees That's on right. the one side and on the other. That's right. Then he said Keep growing. Me, these waters issue out toward the east country. Mm -hmm. Go down into the desert and go into the sea, which, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Mm. And it, call, it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, What's, whether soever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Sad, man. Because these waters shall come thither, mm -hmm. but they shall be healed, and everything shall live, whether the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from the in Getty, in Getty mm -hmm. even unto the Ingelium, mm -hmm. they That's shall close. be a place to spread forth nets. Uh -huh. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. Okay, all right, 12, read 12 for me. And but by, the, by river? the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, mm -hmm. shall grow all trees for meat, whose mm -hmm. leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. Mm -hmm. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because Lord, their mercy. waters they issued out of the sanctuary. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Okay, Lord, have mercy. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, 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 I want you to get Re Revelation 22, because Revelation 22 is kind of gives me. Gives us a highlight of where this is going. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne and out of the Lamb of God. So the origin of the flow, the origin of the day, the origin of the anointing of the day is flowing from the throne of God. All right? Now, there's a lot of us, I'm talking to those that are viewing, we come after church, but we never get after the presence. All right. So something happens in us when we start going after the presence, after the glory, after the skirt, after the anointing. And the Bible says, and in the midst of the street, right? And in the midst of the street of it, and on every side of the river, were there the tree of life. Listen, listen. So the trees are symbolic of you and I, the plantings of the Lord. What should be flowing out of you is life. Everything that comes in contact with you is going to live. Every person that comes in contact with you is going to live. Every depressed person that comes by your way is going to get a shot of joy. See, you ought to speak that word. I don't care what the doctor's telling you. I'm destined to live. You got that? And the Bible says, keep reading. And... It shall bear on either twelve manner. The there was the tree of life. That's right. It shall bear twelve manner of fruits. Uh huh. And yielded her fruit every month. And that's and right. The leaves of the tree. And the were leaves for the of the tree are for the, the nation. Now, doesn't that sound like what we just read in Ezekiel forty-seven? Right. All right. So it says now, these trees, they're lined up along the bank of the river. And I would rather use the word. They are lined versus lined. Aligned. Aligned versus lined. There's an alignment that happens that's an indicator of our level of maturity that only shows up when we get a revelation of the flow. Well, what are you talking about? There is something that happened when David took the throne, and it talks about all the people that came out from every tribe. And out of one of the tribes, it says, not only were these men that came to David experts of war, but they understood ranking, ranking. which is alignment. Yes, sir. See, when we hit maturity, it's not about who's on first, who's on second, who's at the door, who's singing the song, who's doing this. It's about alignment. We understand rank. We understand that I am positioned to create a flow or an overflow for the nations to come in. And that's why the body of Christ is struggling, because we have too many five-fold that want to be aligned versus aligned. Woo! 
angry, I said it. You with me? Go to 2 Peter chapter 3 just for a moment. I want to just put this verse in your hearing. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Be not ignorant. Be not ignorant of what? What thing? That one day, one day is with the Lord. You got it? Three and eight. But, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That's right. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years mm -hmm. and a thousand years as one day. That's right. So he says, beloved, now this is prophetic language. One day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So I just wanted you to see where I got this increments that Ezekiel was measuring in 47. He's talking about days. Yep. All right. I want you to go to Psalms 30 now. I'm sorry. Psalms 90. Psalm 90. Are y'all still with me? Because I'm getting rid of warp drive in a minute. Psalms, yeah, what are they saying online? Psalms 94, it says what? For a thousand, a thousand years, years in thy sight are but as so, yesterday. So God said a thousand years is like a yesterday, it's past. All right, so, so God is looking at a thousand years is like a day. It's like yesterday, not yesterday's. Yesterday. It's what? It's past. So there, there is some prophetic message in this measurement of a thousand that Ezekiel the prophet is watching being measured. And it all speaks to emerging or growing in maturity. Right? We ought to be more trustworthy now than we were when we got saved. We ought to be more consistent, more faithful, right? We, we, we should be. All right. So you say, well, well, well what has happened? Because some of us tried to get out of the measurement, get out of the day before it was time. We didn't want to go through. We wanted to get out. Okay, y'all not hear me. Okay, all right. Now, what's interesting? We got some comments? Positive affirmations. Good, good, good. Now, I want you to see Matthew chapter 24 because... I, I just want to pull out that every one of us has been assigned a day or a season. Now you say, I thought you was going to tell us about the fourth measurement. I am, but I got, I got to work it. Let me, let me work it. I ain't got nobody to get on the B3 for me, so let me just lay it out. Let me work it up a little bit. Right? The Bible in Matthew 24 talks about the days of Noah. Huh. The days of Noah, which suggests that the dispensation or the season of what Noah represented extended before and beyond his natural days. Right? See, I want to know that if you really walk in your day, will we still be talking about it when you physically leave the earth? Red? That's what I... That's what, well, that's what I want to know. I, I want to know if you're leaving some kind of legacy for people to say, you know what? Now he lived from this moment to this moment, but we're still operating in a day in something he manifested in the earth realm. Uh, that's what I want to know. What will they remember? What will they say about your day? So, the Bible refers to a season as the days of Noah, which includes all the preparation that came up to his birth date or earth date and then what happened in the season following it. Now, so the days of Noah, watch me, would go all the way from Abraham or all the way back to Adam, all the way up to the other side of the flood. Now, what was happening in that day? You see, a gradual transgression of people leaving the presence of the Lord, but still trying to act spiritual. <laughs> uh -huh. See, I, 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 I just want to talk to you. You, you. you just cannot discern maturity from spirituality. Because people will act spiritual don't mean they ground it. 
So where do, you, where, where, where do you get that from? Well, if you look at Cain, it said Cain left the presence of the Lord. But you find people creating musical instruments of worship under all of his descendants that were away from the presence of the Lord. You say, well, how can that be? How can you be away from God and still sing his prayer? Ask anybody in the church. They ought to be able to answer that. <laughs> anybody sitting here ought to be able to answer that. Right? We do it all the time. So why is there a challenge to remember the days of Noah? Because people were engaged in lifestyles. People were engaged in everyday living, but could not circumspectly discern how close they were to destruction. See, I'm wondering if something happened in the church that we have become desensitized to what's coming upon the face of the earth because we're spiritual but we're not able to discern there's judgment coming and the Bible declares it's got to start at the house of God. And if we would judge ourselves, we wouldn't have to be judged. But we're not going to do that because our skew of comparison is messed up. You know, I compare myself to you when I should be looking on the throne. Okay, you didn't want to hear that. Let me get on down the street. So, 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 so what do you mean? John chapter 8. So we got days of Noah, right? The Bible says in John chapter 8, you got it? Verse 56, it says, your father. And your father rejoiced to see my day. That's right. And he saw it and was glad. So Jesus is talking to some religious leaders and said, Abraham saw a day. And the day that he saw was thousands of years in his future. All right? So I can stand in my day <laughs> and look at a day in front of me and pull strength out of that day to help me walk in mine. See, I should be able to look at your day and say, you know what? There's something about your day that inspires me to walk better, that inspires me to live, if I'm looking at the right thing. So I ask your neighbor, Am I inspired by anything going on with you? Does your day make me want to chase skirts? Does your day make me want to go after God? Does your day make me hungry for the God that you serve? I mean, am I? Am I blessed? Am I encouraged? Am I challenged by what I see going on in your day? Or do I say, I just wish you would just get out the way. You just taking up time. Y'all quiet. So not only did Abraham rejoice to see the day, said he saw it, then he got glad about it. Right? So I have a day. Jesus had a day. Noah had days. All right? Is that the fourth day? Is that... The fourth measurement, the 4,000, is that river stage? Is that overflow stage? Or is there something else? Are y'all intrigued? I, 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 I can't hear nobody. I can't hear nobody up in here talking to me. What do you say? Well, I found the answer in Hebrews chapter 4. Ooh, I'm preaching up in here today. Boaz, Jason, say some to me. Roar for me over here. <laughs> you ready? I'm in Hebrews chapter 4. Let me start reading. Uh, start, start at verse, verse 1. Take your time. Just, yeah. Let us therefore fear, mm -hmm. fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, uh -oh. any of you should seem to come short of it. That's right. For unto us was That's the right. gospel preached. Say that, man. As well as unto them. Mm -hmm. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Keep going. For we which have believed <sighs> do enter into rest. Whoo, hold it. Hold my mule. Said, Get my mule. Come on. As I have sworn in my wrath, 
if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise. Come on. And God did rest the seventh day from all his Say people. that, man. And in mm -hmm. this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Uh huh. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, mm -hmm. today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, today, if you were to hear his voice, harden not your heart. Sunday, January 9, 2022, verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest, uh -huh. then would he not afterward had spoken of another day. Uh-oh. Nine there remaineth. There remaineth, therefore, a rest to the people of God. So he spoke of another day. A day called rest where you and I cease from our own labors. What are you talking about? What, what's the overflow day? I don't have to work it. I just got to walk in it. Wow. I don't have to manipulate God. I don't have to lotto God. I don't have to beg God. I just need to be in the day. So when I talk about rest, I'm talking about I just need to come in alignment that this is the manifestation of my day. Well, what does alignment look like? You with me? Remember over in Ephesians chapter 4, and, and we'll get there, and then I'll roll you back and tell me why it's important that we listen to who's talking. Ephesians chapter 4 says he gave some. Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some. He gave some, some, some. He gave some what? Some, some what? Apostles, some, 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 some of them. Some, some of them. Some, some of them. Some apostles, prophets, some Amen. pastors for the perfecting. For the ordering or the aligning of the saints with respect to their individual calling. Do you understand? This revelation did not come until the revelator showed up. That's right. That's right. That's right. This stuff didn't come out of Jerusalem. No, this stuff came, came out of a priest after a whole nother order. That's right. He wasn't influenced by Levi. He was influenced by Melchizedek. So this teaching about us ordering or us aligning or us coming into agreement with what our day is came out of Apostle Paul. And this is the same person in Acts chapter 9 where it is recorded that when they got word that he was saved, the whole church shifted to a place called rest. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about right there. Do you understand that all of us are going to feel so much better when you rest in your day. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? When you just agree to do what God has purposed you to do in your day, all of us are going to feel better because some of us that are doing your day are going to stop doing your day and do our day. Huh? What are, you, well, 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 what are you talking about? Well, we got to make sure that the body's not lacking so you got some of us being hands and arms and feet and toes when you the hand, the feet, and the toe. Y'all not, not feeling me yet. You say, well, 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 well I, I'm ready. Well, ready and mature are two different things. You say, well, how do you know I'm not ready? Because you haven't been a good steward over what you've already been given. Ooh, you didn't want to hear it like that. What are you talking about? A day of rest. Well, I want you to see it. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Now look, did, did, they, did they know that? Did they know that Paul or a Paul salvation or Paul's deliverance was going to be the catalyst or the activator for a whole dispensation of rest that comes upon the church? No, they didn't. Matter of fact, some of them didn't even believe it. Right? And that's why you got to have some activators in your life, like a Barnabas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
They said, yeah, he may have got saved Monday, but he was planned and created from the foundation of the world. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, the light may be ugly, but look, we can get over all of that. Let's get back to what they were created for. There's going to be people in your life that can't see past your ugliness to discern your day. That's why they're Barnabas in the kingdom. They say, you know what? No, we need to go get him. He's valuable. You with me? I'm in Acts chapter 9. Got it? Read it for me. And then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. Then had, the then had the churches rest. Well, what happened in front of that? Well, Paul's converted. Barnabas has entreated him. Barnabas has brought him down, introduced him to the saints. And something happened in the fabric, in the spirit of the church. Something shifted. Y'all not, not feeling me. I wish we had that kind of ambiance yes. that when you step into a room, people can discern, hey, wow, oh, I feel so much better. I came to work heavy and depressed and rest just came into the office. Lord, have mercy. Yes. Didn't have to say a word, just be. Yes. Yes. Do folk like being around you? <laughs> huh? Do folk, do folk enjoy your presence? Do people just say, hey, you don't have to do nothing. You don't have to say nothing. Just, just let, me, let me hang with you today. Let me ride in the car. Let me just talk to you. For, listen, can I just come and sit at your house? And you say, Lord, have my pig pen. Here they come again, dust and stuff. Come on. I mean, do you bring rest? See, this introduction of rest into the church speaks of a whole Old Testament order that was a shadow. It was called Solomon. Solomon is known for wisdom. The Bible said that when Solomon took the throne, because of patterns he got from his daddy, he was able to put Israel in their proper place. And you say, well, how do you know the people are in their proper place? I mean, we know that you're an apostle. I mean, you go around telling folk what to do. But this is how you know that people are doing what they're supposed to do. They get happy. The Bible said when the Queen of Sheba saw all the different stages and alignments of all the people that are in the kingdom, and she looked and saw all of them were happy. You know people are in the right place when they're happy doing what they're doing. That's alignment. Are you happy being what you're doing? Are you? Answer the question. <laughs> are you happy? Huh? Now, I, I get a serious question because this has been one of the subtle attacks of the enemy. The enemy, through the pandemic, has robbed you of joy. Do you still have joy? I'm talking about joy that you have even if you don't do anything. Do you have that kind of joy? Huh? You know, I, I, I mean, I, mean I, I know we have bad moments, bad, bad, bad episodes, but they don't last three and four days like they used to. I, I, I'm, hope I'm, too, I'm hoping I'm speaking the truth. We, we, we can't afford to go three and four days toe up. All right, so, so our recovery time is short. We be mad for a minute. I'm not even going to say a night. We're just mad for a moment. But we get it together real quick because we know that, 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 that we're portals and, and whatever's coming through our gate, people are walking through our gate, and we don't want to mess up with our junk stuff that we have not submitted, right? But most of the time, we operate in joy. Right? So, so, why are we still struggling? Why, why is it so hard? Well, I, I have to go back to what I am. I've got to put some of this on we don't understand that we're in a dispensation that God is trying to raise up voices. Not every voice. But there are voices that are called together. There are many voices in the last two years have done more scattering than they have been gathering. And unfortunately, some of those voices have spoken volumes in the kingdom of God, which has us in a straight betwixt two, which means we're immobile. Okay. I'm in Ephesians chapter 1. I'm trying to get there. So rest came because of Paul. Say with me, rest came. Did, I mean, did everybody get it? No. 
Did Paul get it immediately? No. Right? But as he matured and began to understand his calling, you'll hear it as we read in Ephesians chapter 1. You ready? Verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that's right, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Say it, man. Both which are in heaven Say and it. which are on earth. That's even right. In him. That's right. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Okay. Then go over to chapter 3 and read 1, 2, and 3. Mm hmm. For this cause I, Paul, That's right. the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to mm -hmm. you, word, mm -hmm. how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a for, or in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge That's in right. the mystery of Christ. So Paul declares that I am graced for a certain dispensation. And that grace that is upon me for a certain dispensation or for a certain day or season or time is directed and aimed at a people. So understand that you are operating your day not for us to look upon your glory, but to look upon his glory on the inside of you to draw a specific individual or culture or influence of people into the kingdom. So part of my assignment is knowing who I'm called to. Ask yourself a question. Who am I really called to? Who, who am I graced to grab? Who am I graced to win? Who should be influenced by my day? So you walk by the cemetery, and there's an inscription somewhere in the year 4031, Archbishop Wingfield Du Bois, and it says, well, dot, dot, dot. Oh. Well, what? <laughs> That's all it's going to say. Because I have not used the grace of God that's upon me to reach the people that are assigned to my day, to reach the culture that is assigned to my day. Paul said, I got it by revelation. Well, how do I get revelation? Discernment. I got to have relationship. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this gathering, as much as I am an advocate of people coming back to church, I'm a greater advocate of people getting back to God. Yeah. We've got to get back to the presence. Get Job chapter 1 and verse 6 said, there was a day that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. See, we got to get back to that day that my goal, my objective, when I gather with you, when you gather with me, is we've got to get to the presence of the Lord. That's where we get instruction. That's where we get discernment. That's where we get revelation. That's where we come in alignment with what God has called us to do for our day. Right? Now, what I like about today, and I'm going to close with this stuff, while the sons of God have come, they recognize we, we're, we're summoned into the presence of the Lord. We need to stop ignoring the call. We need to stop ignoring, the, you know, the pull, the tug, when God says, look, listen, I want you to seek my face. Right? The Bible said, and Satan came with him. Said what he was doing. The Lord says, I mean, so he still has access. And, and, and the Lord said, well, well, Satan, what's up? What you been doing? What, what, what you on? He said, I've been up and down in the earth, walking up and down, through and through it, and I, and, I, and I just cannot find anything to mess up. See, I want that to be said about you and I. Yeah. That the devil said, oh, I swung by the Brown's house, and I can't find not a door open legally that I can go in and tear up some yeah. stuff. He said, I wish I could say that. I wish I could say that there's no room. I wish I could say that there's not a crevice in my heart that the enemy has not tried to fill with something else other than the love of God. 
and I'm saying, if that's you and the door is open, I can tell you how to shut it. I can tell you how to get it closed. I can tell you how to war with it. You got to get back to the presence. You got to get back to the flow. You got to go back and say, God, you and I need to go back to day one. We need to know what the walk is like. We need to know what submission is like. We need to know what reproduction is like. I need to be led by the Spirit. I need to get off the control handle. Right? What is the day going to feel like? See, when, when, when I'm at, I had to go see my dear friend down in Bloomington, down in that office. I knew it was going to be an encounter. I even hate when he uses the word. I need to adjust some stuff. I said, oh, God, pain. You know what? And, 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 and then, listen, this is what bothers me. I, I'm there, and I don't think, I'm not going to call his name because y'all know who I'm talking about. Hey, 75% of us go down there anyway. He says, he says, <laughs> you know, <laughs> huh? The chiropractor, see, I said, this is what he says, says to me. The mark, let go, let me do it. God, don't say that to me. I'm the, I'm the archbishop. <laughs> don't, don't, don't find me. Let, 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 let go. Let me, let me, let me, let me do it. Let me do the work. See, see, some of me got real spiritual. I said, oh, God, that's what you've been trying to tell me. Let me do it. Let me do it. And, 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 then, and then he said, okay, I want you to slide back on the edge of this table and just fall back in my arms. Fall back in what? <laughs> Come on, just rest. Just relax. Just, just, just relax. And everything in me said, oh, uh-uh. I'm going to trust you to catch me. Me and all this glory, I'm going to trust you. He said, you got, you got to let me do it. The adjustment was terrible. By the time he snapped my neck, snapped my leg, snapped my ankle, snapped my back, then got up and said, I need to do it all over again just to make sure it's going to stay. And all the time he kept saying to me, let me do it. Quit fighting me. That's the message right there. <laughs> Let me make the adjustments. And you rest. I can do this. I know how to do this. I've been working on this plan from the foundation of the world. Trust me that I can pull this thing off. Matter of fact, the reason why I'm in you to do in the will of my good pleasure, not yours. Let me do it. Rest. Come on, on your feet. This is the altar call. Woo we thank you, sir. Come on, we just we it's big enough we can social distance up here if you need to come. Father If you need to just put a prophetic act with that and say, I'm going to come and I'm going to be like the sons of God. I'm going to come and present myself. God, here I am again. I know you know me. You know everything about me, but I'm presenting myself today, the living sacrifice. 